We trying to behave ourselves on the story. But y'all know what we thinking right now. <laughs> I'm ready for the night. I got a little uh, extra energy. I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. As your kids, tell them go sit their bad asses down so we're grown folks in here talking. <laughs> T-G-I-M. The ferocious in case one of y'all decide y'all might want to get up and slap me tonight. I'm ready to fight. <laughs> <laughs> can people oh. see? Can they see us or do they only see you, Claudia? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I think they see all of us. How can they not see us, our bright, shining personalities? Okay, so Q, are you back drinking? Are we still? Because people last week, uh, real quick, they kept asking if you was pregnant because they kept. <laughs> <laughs> It's not one yeah. of them gentlemen callers. Because I'm trans. And <laughs> oh, Lord. Listen. Don't go there. Oh. <laughs> yes, I'm a trans man. I'm pregnant. Um, <laughs> no, I'm uh, drinking Red Bull tonight. I'm drinking wow. Red Bull. Mm -hmm. And then somebody else was like, Claudia, shame on you. You're trying to get him to get off the wagon and, and get drunk. What a commercial, Claudia. No audio. Oh, well, we'll be back. We're right back after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Excuse our technical issue. We're working on it. And, uh, you know, that's just the devil trying to slap us out of first place. That's all the devil's trying to do. But we are back one more time. Let me introduce my fabulous co-host, brand strategist, Al Reynolds. What's up, Al? What's up, Claudia? Talk show host, multimedia personality, Funky Dineva. What's good, Q? This leopard blouse I got on, baby. I'm feeling real ferocious in case one of y'all decides y'all want to slap me tonight. <laughs> I'm ready to fight. Well, um, they couldn't hear what we were saying, but earlier I was saying last week, because you haven't been drinking, uh, mm -hmm. several people in the chat was asking, is Q pregnant? What's going on? <laughs> now, how I am I pregnant? I am not a trans man, okay? I'm part of the LGBTQ <laughs> community. I know I got on my, my lesbian hat. <laughs> but how am I going to be pregnant, y'all? But no, I'm not drinking tonight. Um, I'm drinking Red Bull. Al and Al, you drinking a beer, right? Yeah, I'm doing beer. Okay, doing all right. Uh, we got people already in the comments. I'm at a hotel in New York, and uh, you know, it's there's no mini bar, unfortunately. So I'm gonna have to go handle that when I get out of here. Uh, we have Carrie and Wholeness in the chat. She said, "I've been waiting for this night. I can't wait to hear the thoughts on the Will Smith saga. I love getting the tea from the the greatest who've ever done it. Let's go, Claudia Q and fine ass Al. So hey, right. oh Al, you got action. I Carrie and send uh, uh, Al a uh, um. A DM. We trying to hook right. him up and get him. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, is it let's... Christmas? What happened? <laughs> is it Christmas? <laughs> okay. It okay. could be. What's your type, Al? Uh, which way? Rich. Uh, let's let's start with. <laughs> <laughs> let's start I don't. With... I don't want to say. I don't want to say rich. That's that. That, that just. That just kind of like. No, no, demeanor is what I'm looking for. I would say accomplished for sure. And that's either guy or girl. Um, someone, you know, I got to have a God-fearing partner. Um, <laughs> athletic, someone who is um, at least physically Girl, fit. Get off my line. Trying, get off my trying to be physically fit. Trying to be physically fit is important. I understand the importance of healthy living, that type when of stuff. Someone who loves to travel. Okay. When, hold on. When that came about? <laughs> More what are you hard. talking about? These must be amended requirements. Because <laughs> it wasn't like that when he's in Miami. I just thought it was about body and fun and, you know what I'm saying? Man, cut it out. Mm -mm. You know what? That's We're going to get up, Al. Yes? 
that's you. You you the one that gotta have a dude that's like you know body looks healthy. You know. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's get off this and let's get into Chris Rock and Will Smith because that's what everybody's tuning in for. They want to hear. Okay. Uh, in case you miss been living under a rock, uh, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock after Rock made a joke about Jada Pinkett Smith's shaved head. Well, King Richard, the father of Venus and Serena Williams, weighed in and ha- he had this to say about Smith's behavior. Richard said, we don't condone anyone hitting anyone unless it's in self-defense. What do y'all think about what went down and Richard's statement? Q, let's start with you. What do you think? You know, I, I, I'll spare the whole what I think about the overall situation. I did a whole video on YouTube. Y'all can check it out. My final thoughts on the whole situation is Will did the wrong thing for all the right reasons. OK, you guys got that. He did the wrong thing for all the right reasons. Um I'm totally on board with King Richard's statement. You know what I'm saying? There's there's never going to be a world where you are going to get me on board with walking on stage and slapping somebody on live television. Like there's just never going to be a world where that is going to be okay in my book. Um, So I I agree with King Richard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Al, what do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, you know, what he said, I mean, I feel like for it to come from the person that he portrayed to win the Oscar, this is pretty significant. And whether you guys want to say that that man is demented or not, um, I, I took care of my mother the last three years of her life and she had Alzheimer's and they may be demented, but they still have their moral their moral meter is still there so they can still understand stuff. They're not just completely insensitive or don't know what they're talking about. I think he makes a lot of sense. Under no circumstances, Will Smith was 110% wrong for walking up on that stage doing a live production and slapping Chris Rock. It was unbelievable. And we're going to definitely hit this from a few different angles tonight, but the, the 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 response of some people on social media, the justification of it. Listen, a lot of people voice their opinion online. We do it every week. Can you imagine us doing a live event somewhere and someone being mad at our words, whether it hit a, a, a nerve that we may not even know about, and then assaulting us, and then still being able to come back and get an award in my face? It's just so many things about this. So we're going to we have a few different takes on this because a lot, of course, everyone's chiming in. In a recent interview with Gail King, Jim Carrey said he was sickened by the standing ovation that Will Smith received after winning the Best Actor Award. Check out what Carrey said. I've I have announced this morning that I was suing. Oh, he said I would have announced this morning that I'm suing Will for two hundred million dollars because that video was going to be around forever. And um it's going to be ubiquitous, ubiquitous. And Carrie added, oh, I struggled with that word. OK, that insult is going to last a very long time now. Do you think the situation would have been handled differently if Will Smith would have slapped a white comedian? Oh, most definitely. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. So the, the, the first thing I want to say is, Jim Carrey, go sit your ass down. Like Now, what I don't like is the active solicitation of other comedians and actors to jump on this hate train, right? I get it that everybody has an opinion, everybody has a right to their opinion, but it almost feels as if Hollywood is targeting certain people um, to, to, to solicit their opinions, quite frankly, about something that's a personal domestic matter between Will and Chris. We don't need everybody chiming in, talking about what they shoulda, woulda, coulda did. Um, but I will say this, Chris Rock is a better man than I'll ever be because there was no way in hell that I would have um, not pressed charges on you or not marched my ass down to the courthouse and filed some paperwork on your ass come this morning, come the next morning. Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and Ellen all said they were traumatized. Al, what do you think about um, what do you think what about Jim Carrey said? said? Mm-hmm. Listen, I, I have to disagree with Funky on this. These Jim Carrey is a huge star in Hollywood, and Funky and Claudia, you both are Astra actors, correct? So yeah, you, yeah. you carry a card. When you carry that card, and when you're a huge star in Hollywood, being a member of that, there are rules. You have bylaws. You have standards of conduct. You have also California laws that you have to follow as an actor. It's just like if 
being a bus driver, let's make the analogy. They have to follow the laws of the speed. They have to follow the laws of driving. So for him to have a say into how Will Smith abused those bylaws and those standards of conduct, any actor that's in that group, any actor on that level has the right to speak on it. And I think he's right. I think I think that in many, many ways, I would have probably taken the same strategy that he mentioned. I, it, you know, Chris Rock definitely is a bigger man than anybody that I know that's from where Chris Rock is from originally and from New York. I don't think I would have allowed a man on that world stage to slap me in front of billions of people and just walk away from me. I just wouldn't do it. And if I did, I promise you the next day he would have woken up to an email or his lawyers or his representation from my lawyers because I'm going to sue his ass. I'm with you on that. There's no way in hell I'm finishing the show. I probably would have left with an attitude or been. Chris looked extremely traumatized. Like he looked like, uh, because to me, my opinion, and people can not agree if they don't want to. I didn't think the joke was that bad, and I don't even know. I didn't take it as an alopecia joke. I don't even don't even know if he even knows that she has Mm -hmm. it. My brother has alopecia, and it doesn't look like that. His head's super blotchy. Has no eyebrows. Lost his lashes. Like he has. A very like you can tell, you know what I mean? Like he's looks changed totally in in two years, right? And not to say that she doesn't have it. I'm not saying I'm not implying that she could have it beginning the beginnings of it and wanted to kind of get ahead of it and shave her head to make it look even. But like my brother has it, and I see how how he suffers with it. But he's just like, hey, you know, it it, it is what it is. Now I don't but wait a minute. But wait a minute, Claudia. She's rocked a ball head before. Right. Beautifully. Her look. And she rocks a ball right. head beautifully. So why is it that all of a sudden he was supposed to know that she had alopecia or the reference of the joke didn't have anything to do with the illness? It was the look of a ball head. But you want to know, you guys, I, I, you know, I said when I did my deep dive, this situation and this tension did not start that night. It actually started yeah. back in 2016. Oh, I agree. That, that, that Jada boycotted the Oscars. That was also the year Chris Brown host, Chris Rock, excuse me, hosted the Oscars. And he laid into her ass in his opening speech then. And if you notice, when he cracked the joke, then looked at Will, he said something to the effect of, what? That was a light one. That was a light one, which says to me, it suggests to me that there had been previous conversation between him and Will about cracking jokes on his wife. I may be wrong, but I want to touch on this one word that's been loosely thrown around, traumatized. There's only one person in this whole situation that's allowed to use that word, and that's Chris Rock. Wanda Sykes, go sit your ass down. Ellen DeGeneres, shut the hell up. And Amy Schumer, I'm going to call Monique on you. (laughs) Let's not pretend like you sat there and watched somebody's brains get blown out on the stage. You are not traumatized. You do not have PTSD. You do not need therapy as a result of a slap that did not even break the skin. So can we stop it with the word traumatized? And that's why I said, I feel like at this point now, there's this campaign against well, listen the situation is bad enough on its own and will looks bad enough on his own for y'all to be putting the extra stank on it y'all are not traumatized i'm traumatized from her lack of humor that she had as a host in my opinion she was boring and all her jokes fl- uh, fell flat and like you said q she need to go sit down somewhere they should have had monique in that position and i i don't like her ever since the netflix situation because netflix net Netflix paid her 10 times more than what they were going to offer Monique um, to to do the exact similar job. So as far as I'm concerned, traumatized, I'm traumatized, Amy. No, you won't be able to make this be. I just don't even like her using the word, because like you said, once those women start using those words, it grows leverage and it grows steam. And that's the demise of the whole situation and how we're looking at this. I'm going to even, and before we go to commercial break, shout out to, oh, well over 3,000 people in the chat already. Already. Um, So, uh, and even as far as trauma goes with that joke, okay, I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb and say this. Will Smith laughed at it. Um, Then there's a video that came out where Jada is like, I don't care what people think about my bald head. I like it. I love this look. 
And so I'm like, were you traumatized at that moment when he said made the G.I. Jane joke? He didn't make right. an alopecia joke. He made a bald headed G.I. Jane joke. Right. right. He didn't say your illness. He didn't come for our illness. So people's like Will's protecting his wife and his black queen. And she's sitting there with this. It was about the illness. He laughed. If it really wasn't if he felt it was about the illness, he would have had even a chuckle. I think he'd be like, oh, hell, I think the reaction would have been a lot different. Listen, Claudia, before you go to joke, I think you've set this up for a good old hot tea coming up when you come back from this commercial. This is not about alopecia. This is not about protecting a black woman. This is not about Chris Rock. I promise you, and I can't wait to share my thoughts on it. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial no, actually, break. No, oh, actually no. not. Yeah, we, we're not because we uh, we started late. OK, uh, let me read this uh, statement from the Academy because people saying, you know, how dare they let this man, Will Smith, who assaulted the uh, presenter, then get the Oscar and then and, and then give an acceptance speech to a full house and didn't even acknowledge Chris Rock. OK, according to a new statement from the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Science. Uh, Will Smith was asked to leave the 94th Academy Awards after the onstage altercation with Chris Rock over a joke directed at wife Jada Pinkett Smith, but refused. The statement says, while we would like to clarify that Mr. Smith was asked to leave the ceremony and refuse, we also recognize we could have handled the situation differently. Ooh, the plot thickens. What do y'all think about that, y'all? They lying. The Academy is flat out lying. Either, <laughs> either, either they are lying or like they said, they could have handled it differently because I don't know what world you in the club and the bouncer says you got to go. And you say, I'm not going. And they say, fine. And go back to their post. That part. How that work. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I think an executive decision was made where we've already had an awkward moment. It's a live show. There are so many moving pieces. It's going to make it even more awkward if we throw this man out, knowing that two awards, three awards down the line, his award is going to be up. What are we going to do then? We've already got all the sequences you know, mapped out or whatever the case may be, let's just let it ride. That's what I think that happened. And if that's not what happened, then we have to take a deeper dive into the privilege of it all, right? You know what I'm saying? Because Will really got away with some stuff. stuff now, stuff, I don't want to misconstrue this as, you know, coming down on a black man and we need to stand by him, like, and all that type of stuff. But all things constant, Will's ass was supposed to be escorted out of those awards the moment he got back to his seat. And there is no, but Jada refused. And when she refused, security was supposed to pick them both up by the scruff of their neck and throw their ass out on Sunset Boulevard. It's the treatment of Will as the victim here that's really pissing me off. Like you're, of, of the three of them, you're the least victim of all of them. Now, before the right. awards with all the stuff and the cracks you had to endure, because you and your wife decided to put all your business out there in the streets with that damn red table. <laughs> things ain't it, been baby. the same since that red table came. Y'all right. brand has taken a hit from you guys, though. It ain't us. You guys and August Alcina put y'all's business out there. So now you're not, you're in an uncomfortable place. Not used to this position. We've had a very clean reputation. Well, for the most part, mm -hmm. you're not used to this. So I, that's trauma built up. We know from the, he, he. He's at a tipping point. You're not the victim on that night, though. Right, Al? What do you think? Listen, I, I, I'm listening to both of you, and I, you know, I agree on parts of it. I think, Q, that they probably did ask him to leave. I think that he said, hell no, I'm winning this award. That's why I'm here. My agent told me. That's why I'm seated at this part of the stage. My wife is here. This is the night that I've been waiting for. I have worked 35 years to get this. You're not asking me to leave now. And plus, of the emotional state that he was in, he just walked up and slapped Chris Rock live on television and then went back to his seat and yelled at him profanity. He was just not, he had an impulse reaction. He had a break and there was no way that they were going to kindly or smoothly remove him from those Oscars given where his mind and his emotion was at that moment. I think but, they're setting them up themselves up for a huge lawsuit because you could you don't know what could happen to Chris Rock or, or any. It just sets up a big for the bigger picture, right? In the future, right. if we don't like a joke or some we have issues with the host, we can go slap them and then we can still uh, stay in the <laughs> venue because I'm emotional. Okay, <laughs> but I agree with you on that though, Claudia. And I do. Where? I do. Where? I mean, listen. That was for all intents and purposes, and I'm going to use a strong word here. That was a violent act. Yes. Where was 
the rush of security as he was walking back to his seat. At the I point think everybody was shocked too. Back to his seat, security, but security guards know their protocol. They, they know their protocol. They know that we're supposed to keep people from bum rushing the stage. And if a fight breaks out, we're supposed to throw somebody's ass out. So I don't even understand how he made it back to his seat and sat so comfortably to throw obscene expletives on the stage to Chris Brown. When that, when that camera panned back to his chair, Bubba and Bobo were supposed to be standing there saying, boy, you got to go. So they had better you. security on the Zeus network. Like, they stopped <laughs> <laughs> right, but, so but wait, but wait, wait a, a minute. minute. We gotta oh, take, you gotta a, break take a break. Okay. So we'll we'll finish up. Um, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we'll be joined by the house co-host Cheryl Rich. You don't want to miss this coming up next. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to the 3,400 people in the chat, keeping it very, very lively. If you are feeling the show, give me some thumbs up and some flames, and we're gonna read all your comments later on. But right now. We got to uh, introduce our guest. Joining us is a trauma specialist and one of the co-hosts of Fox Soul's returning show, The House, the most beautifully produced show on the network. I, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that. Uh, before we uh, talk to her, let's take a sneak peek of season two of her show. Important the why she went there. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes, you know, we can be curious about something. But I always say just because... Just because somebody asks you a question, you're not you're obligated to answer it. Mm -hmm. Right. Do, and then we can all say it ain't none of your damn business. You're right. And that was a very, <laughs> that was a very, that was a very, that was a very classy based answer. And I respect you a lot for standing in the gap for Cheryl. Oh. Cheryl, what did you go to prison for? <laughs> Please welcome Cheryl Rich. What's up, Cheryl? <laughs> welcome, hey, Cheryl. Cheryl. Oh, wow. Thank you all for having me here. I'm here with royalty, and I'm just honored in this moment. Funky Dineva would not let up, and uh, I'm just honored to be here. Thank you. Well, Thank you. in the spirit of Funky Dineva not letting up, you got to answer the questions right out the gate. What the hell did you go to prison for? We are nosy. We need to know. Well, I'm glad you asked. If you look at my criminal record and being an ex-convict, it's public record. But what did I go to prison for? car theft, drug sales, check fraud. I was the other half of Clyde. I was Bonnie Ooh. and a whole lot of pain in the ghetto streets of Cleveland mm -hmm. from a mother who wow. didn't want me and I was looking for some kind of connection. So drugged out, wilding out. The details is in the criminal record because you, once you come out of prison, you never ever get to live it down. But I'm here standing tall and I wish I could change it, but here I am, and I'm honored to be here. You know what? You don't have to change it. That's part of your story, and it actually makes you a, even more of a beautiful person and success story to have that kind of beginning. And I went to school in Cleveland, and I know I'm very familiar for, about the East Side. I was all about that 216. I used yes. to work in a Tower City and oh. Superior and all that. I mean, I saw a lot of crime there, and it was tough. it's tough to get out of there. Yes. And for you to be come from that, and now you're on a highly rated, very good talk show. That's a success story, Cheryl. And that's something to be proud of and not be ashamed of any of your steps that led to this. Well, I thank you so much for saying that because there's a little girl laying in the penitentiary right now uh, with a syringe full of heroin in her veins. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's why the creator of all of heaven and earth saved my life. And to be here with all of you in this moment, Fox Soul, for all of you, the house says, thank you, Kurt T. Jones, Doug DeLuca, the creator, Aaron Johnson Levy, you all, thank you for giving us this platform. We are grateful. And you are, I, real quick, before we get to Al's question, are you, I know you're, I already know the answer to this. Are you excited about season two of the house? <laughs> I keep saying a long way for the penitentiary. <laughs> long, I just got to keep it real. You hear that funky? Long let me way. Tell let, me tell about, let me tell you about this lady. So we get on set and, you know, I'm not knowing what to expect. This lady was having a personal party, baby. She had a speaker in her Bluetooth speaker. And she was walking around the set playing California Love. And she, I was like, who is this woman just walking through set like a Tasmanian devil having uh -huh. a whole party? And then before you know it, uh, we got to playing Tina Turner's Rolling on the River. We reenacted the whole thing. We had the whole set dancing when i tell you cheryl is a good time cheryl oh. is a good time listen let me tell y'all the truth funky dineva came in there with, with 
razor blades and, and knives and everything. And we looked at each other. We had to do the funky chicken. First funky did the funky chicken. I don't know if you don't know the funky chicken. Google that. I did the funky chicken and we looked at each other and we said, let's funky chicken together. Oh, wow. and, and I felt warmth. You know, uh, Chris and Tony, all my hosts, they said the warmth that Funky Dineva gave me, man, I'm telling you, and, and I'm just, I'm here because you put the word out first. Mm-hmm. Love to hear Cheryl, it. you um, you have used your Instagram to post a lot of empowering um, messages. And one that really stuck out to me was the one that you said, for the people who choose to live in a box, come free yourself. Can you tell me, you know, what's the inspiration behind that? Choose to be free, you said. You know, does that come from your journey? Uh, does that come from your sexuality journey? Does that come from your, your criminal journey, your life journey? Where does that come from? I am really glad you said that. Uh, thank you, Al, for looking through my IG. It is our psyche. Um, I had, I was um, pregnant at 11 years old. The, uh, the book is coming. It's called Naked Insanity uh, or Naked Innocence, still deciding on that. So by 12 years old, I'm a mother and I became a sideshow, a freak. And everybody tortured me. So mm. I know, and I came out of a mother that, you know, couldn't afford me. So I know self-hatred to the core. Mm. I know that we are, many of us are so hurt inside that we want to make others feel bad. We want them to get in a box of pain with us. Mm-hmm. So that's why you see me on my social media, running through the streets when I feed a homeless person. And, I, and I, I call myself the pillow fairy. I'm running through the streets of ghetto of L.A. giving pills at night to homeless people. It's because I know the pain to the core. And I know all people just want to be free. Mm. OK. So, Cheryl, you are part you are one fourth of this LGBTQIAZY duo. What letter are you? Of that whole situation. <laughs> <laughs> Funky Dineva. Uh, Chris uh, last season said, you know, we're going to call it, you got to add W, whatever, right? <laughs> uh, my saying is, at 17 years old, I went to my first gay bar. I saw the most beautiful woman. And it saddens me when women can't say that they look at a voluptuous booty, uh, you know, or, you know, maybe someone, a, a female's legs and, and don't have some type of uh, feeling of, wow, that look good. I mean, it's because we're taught to be in a box. So 17, you know, I've, I've sucked it. I've licked it. What can I say? I used to be gay. I used to be straight. Now I don't claim no titles. I say, I just want to get in bed and go to sleep by eight. So <laughs> what letter am I? I'm love. I'm L. I love it. I love okay, it. Okay, so there was a uh, a really vulnerable moment you guys will see in the episode that Cheryl and I had over uh, substance abuse or whatever. Cheryl, can you talk to us a little bit about your issues with addiction and substance abuse? Most definitely. Another uh, shame that I'm supposed to be up under a rock about, you know, um, I um, started shooting dope at about 13 years old. I was told I was bad after I had that baby. (laughs) And I say that baby because he got his wings. We all going to get our wings and fly away. My son left his body. And so by the time I'm a 12 year old kid, I'm a mother. Everybody said, you bad, you bad, you bad. And what do you, what does a kid do when you tell him that? I say to everyone, thank goodness for the viewers here. Thank goodness for your show and you all coming. Do not tell a child that they're bad because that's a kid's mind. So I internalized that. I skipped over marijuana, cigarettes, liquor. What, how bad can you get? Shooting heroin. So I've been there. I know drug addiction. I was addicted to heroin to kick it. I, I, I don't even have to say that's what you call in pain. So when I see trauma, when I understand self-hatred i can spot it from a mile away and uh i'm clean i got out of prison i went to prison february 11th 1985 i got out july 11th 1989 february 11th 1985 i was rescued not arrested i i i don't i don't do anything now i get high for walking the beach and riding a bike and yoga 20 plus years i love it Cheryl, I am so fascinated with your story. Like the book, whatever, when's it coming? When's that book coming out? Because I want to know all of this for someone to have gone through so much by 13 and then have this peaceful aura about yourself right now. As we discuss season two of your show is a story that I want to read about. So is that 
all I can say is that, you know, once I had the baby, you know, it was over. I just separated from life and I was outside. I just disassociated. So my writing has been fourth to sixth grade level. Yes, with a master's in clinical psychology. I, I know willpower, but I've been little at a time. And I finally found an editor after 30 plus years. Her name is Ray Ann, and she's working hand to hand with me. And we're thinking maybe by the end of the month, we'll finally oh, get Wow. Real quick before we wrap you, Cheryl, I, I want to read a comment from Saliba YA says, I'm so sorry that happened to you. You are a child. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry that happened to you. You are a child. You are not to blame. We should be rescuing you and rooting for you and supporting you all the way around. So there's a lot of love for you in the chat. They are fascinated with you, Cheryl. And I'm sure they're all going to tune into your show uh, right here on Fox Soul. Um, Cheryl, what else can we expect to see in season two of the house? I mean, if it's this kind of vulnerability and, and conversation, we're here for it. Well, my, my, co my co-hosts, we come in with it. Chris, Antonio, uh, Aaron Johnson, Levy, creator of the show. Uh, Kurt T. Jones carried us on his back. Doug fought for us. The whole crew at the house, we're inside Fox Soul's house and we come in with truth. We come in with our, our, our hearts so that we can free people and free souls. And so that nobody will want to punch nobody, baby. What if, what if we could live in a world where we truly support and understand no outside force dictate your peace? What if that's what the house is coming for? Y'all join us. Thank you. Wow. It airs. Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. We are so excited to have the house back on Fox Soul for another season. Thanks again, Cheryl, for joining us. Make sure you catch the premiere of The House this Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's on Fox. So set your reminders, tell a friend. These people are, are putting their hearts out there and their experiences. And, you know, it's a show for everybody. And Trust remember, me. too, remember, oh, too, uh, I'm the first guest on the first episode. And uh, sure. you guys are going to get, a, you know, pieces of my story that, uh, have never been revealed before. So wow. it's going to be a nice episode. And we, I'm so sorry. I forgot to mention that. That Yes, that is going to be a fantastic collaboration right there. Funky Dineva on the house for the premiere episode of episode two. So you, there's yeah. multiple reasons for you to check mm -hmm. out that show. So please don't miss it. And Cheryl, thank you. parents, I just want to say they got kids. It's all inclusive. We are about everybody. And so come on over to the house. Thank you. all. Thank we you. Will, we will be supporting you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank, thank you, you, Cheryl. Bye, we're taking a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more. Make sure you uh, set that reminder for the house this Friday. We'll see you. Welcome back to TGIF. Once again, shout out to Cheryl Rich and the entire cast of the house. And congratulations on season two. Check it out this Friday. And our very own Funky Dineva will be in the house. So you don't want to miss that. All right, y'all. The three-week rule may be the best financial advice ever. Now, what's a three-week rule? Wait three weeks to buy that new car. Wait three weeks to uh, refinance your home mortgage and wait three weeks to finance any major purchase. Now, why three weeks? Because that's how fast the average score master user takes to boost his or her credit. An average of 61 points. And listen, 61 points, that's a whole lot. That added to your credit score can save you tens of thousands of dollars in everything you finance. So ScoreMaster has uh, developed a technology by a credit data scientist to boost your credit score higher and faster than you thought possible. ScoreMaster is super easy. It takes about a minute to get started. And you don't have to wait months for your best credit score. Try ScoreMaster for free and see how many points you can add to your score. Go to scoremaster.com slash T. That's scoremaster.com slash T. Once again, scoremaster.com slash T. Speaking of T, we'll be getting right back to the T after this quick commercial break. So stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back Welcome to TGIF. Back. And, 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 and shout out. Hey. Hey. Hello. Shout out to all the people watching in the chat and commenting. Welcome back. All right, y'all. Uh, let's get into this Tiffany Haddish story. Uh, she had a correct reporter who referred to her gown as a little costume change on the red carpet at the Oscars. Tiffany was offended by the comment and told the reporter, this is not a costume. This is what fame looks like. This is what success looks like. This is what money looks like. Do you think Tiffany's reaction was warranted? Let's go to you, Al. What do you think about how she... Got that lady together. Was it cool? Was it was it wrong? Was it rude? Was it okay? You know, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't find what the reporter said 
Ill intended. Um, I know that Claudia, you've hosted red carpets before. I've hosted red carpets and Q has too. I've seen um, talent come and go and change clothes. And I've used that exact verbiage before. Oh, you did a costume change. Tell me what, you know, what are you wearing or something like that. So to me, it looked like Tiffany was a little bit <laughs> intoxicated or whatever, but I think she handled it. She handled it very well because five years ago, the Tiffany that we saw um, a couple of days ago and how she responded would not have been how she responded five years ago. So I think there was growth there and it was funny. Okay. Q, what do you think? I think she was ignorant as all hell. That That is a common, that is a, that is a common, commonly used term when people change clothes. When y'all go to the Mary J. Blige concert and Mary come out of her different outfits, it's referred to as a costume change. And for you to, Tiff, Tiffany, Tiffany, you know, created a situation that did not exist right because the way she took it in her response you would think that the lady uh was was trying to downplay what she had on or call her clothes cheap or something and she had to go it's not a costume it's Dolce and Gabbana and I'm just a little disappointed in the reporter I just wish she would have been a bit more seasoned because she never found her footing after she realized that she you know, inadvertently offended Tiffany. She never found her footing again. Mm -hmm. And I wish that she would have been able to find her footing and, and reel Tiffany back in to get the interview that she needed. But I mean, it happened, but that lady didn't mean no harm when she said what she said. Working on that side of the red carpet is can be terrifying. And I wondered if the woman was new because I had a moment when I first started where a, a major celebrity uh, at the premiere of um, Bad Boys um, was hella rude to me. And it was one of my first jobs with Fox uh, Sports, actually, for this extreme sports show. And he totally threw me off by one comment. And I was holding back tears and I never got my footing back either. So I kind of felt for the lady, like if she's new at this and you get that, you sometimes you're nervous and you say the wrong thing or you say, and I don't even think it was the wrong thing. I don't think she meant it as a diss either. But if you get someone that's like so confident and comes at you, like you're thrown off. And I remember the lady said, time of death like right now right, right and she i felt like she was definitely thrown off tiffany um we, we're proud of you how far you've come because i remember the one another award show she talked about how she was wearing that same dress to everything she's 1000 percent leveled up with her stylist the best she's looked and uh, you know uh, take it a little easier on, on the reporter sometimes because they're sometimes nervous to meet you as well it was bitchy it was bitchy. It was, you know, it was like bitchy girl behavior. And mm -hmm. um, style and grace goes a long way. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, moving on. Florida's don't say gay bill has officially been signed into law by the worst, second worst governor in the country, Governor Ron DeSantis. Well, it's a tie, I think, between Texas and Florida. We're, we're like kind of neck and neck. Um, the bill bans lessons on sexual orientation or gender identity in kindergarten through uh, third grade. Now, before signing the bill into law, DeSantis said, we will make sure that parents can send their kids to school to get an education, not an indoctr indoctrination. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, Q, let's go to you first, since you live there. Florida man. You are Florida um, man. Everybody stand down. It's a hollow gesture. Um, nobody's teaching sexuality to the kids in, for, in kindergarten through third grade anyway. So, so, you know, save your emotions. Ain't no need to get upset. Um, it, 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 this is symbolic at best. And it literally affects, in my opinion, no one. Because I don't know of anybody who was teaching right. sexuality K through three anyway. I think that's a fantastic point, kind of like the critical race theory that they right. do not teach in uh, elementary school. Anyway, it's a anyway. college course. It's college course, yeah. people. They're not trying to indoctrinate your children. Al, what do you think about this story? Um, so I'll probably have a controversial response to this. You know, I come from uh, a family of educators with over 100 years in education, in the classroom, in administration. My thought on this is that whether they're in kindergarten or in high school, I don't want to rely on the school system to teach my kids about sex or sexual identity or gender identity. I think that's the parent's job. I think the school can assist in ushering the understanding, but teaching should come from home because kids and families, we all come from different angles and different thought processes around this. 
Everybody's different. Every household is different. Uh, children are different. How they learn, how they develop are different. Pu- puberty for everybody is different. I don't think sex education or gender identity or gender education or whatever we want to call it should be taught solely just in the classroom by a teacher. I'm going to say this. Do you remember anything of value from sex ed in high school? Because I certainly no, don't. No, not not that I didn't already know. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and mm-hmm. and. and and then people get mad about even sex ed, which which was right. very basic. It was this is an ovary, this is a this is a vagina, this is a sperm, this is a scrotum, this is how a baby is made. Mm-hmm. These are STDs. These are condoms. And if you think you want to have sex, go to the school nurse and get the little brown paper bag and come. That was sex ed. So it's yeah. like. People get so riled up as if these schools are showing the children pornos and, and giving them the ins and outs of how to hit it from the back and roll around <laughs> to the front. And that's just not even, it's like people didn't begin so upset about nothing. Sex ed is literally where babies come from. It, it, it really did teach nothing. And actually, I didn't get anything from my mom either. It became, I got it from friends and just experience, actually. Just going, you know, just hop, getting in the game. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really from school, wasn't really from home, but I will say this. I'm more concerned about the fact that Ron DeSantis cho- chose to use this and weaponize, you know, the outrage at some of the, the, the LBGTQ plus community, you know what I mean? And use that as um, a selling point for him to get reelected and politi- for political gain. Mm-hmm. I think that's what this is more about. Like these, these governors cherry picking these out, these things mm-hmm. to be uh, outraged about, you know, in their pers- respective states. I think that was a cheap shot. Like I keep saying, they're riling up their base, that crazy Trump base, that, that that super conservative that they hear buzzwords, they hear CRT, they hear the word trans and they get all in the frenzy. He's talking to those people. Um, like I said, Rob DeSantis, Don, Don, whatever his name is, him Fine. and Abbott, they do not believe half the things that are coming out of their mouth. OK, you don't make it through law school. You don't climb the ranks of politics as high as they've climbed being irrational, illogical, non-thinkers, all right? They don't believe that crap that's coming out their mouth. They're just saying it because they want to secure votes by any means necessary. And if that means slicing and dicing this country into more slices in the pizza, then so what? Did y'all see the video of Herschel Walker giving a speech? He Child. couldn't even say CRT correctly. Did you see that, Al? The video and I put he, on my page. Yes. Oh, he, he, listen, all uh, uh, Reverend Warnock has to do to be reelected as Senator of Georgia is just play Herschel Walker's 10 second clip where he could even say CRT. He called it CTI. What is it? He couldn't say school. He said school. He like mispronouncing everything. He was a hot ass mess. Mm-hmm. It was embarrassing to see like it, it. And he was at a rally. But Trump got these people and he's they're black now. He's their black that they're going to get behind mm-hmm. and show that they're not racist. And Herschel Walker is a good friend of mine. That's my favorite. You know, I, I, I encourage y'all go to my IG page and see the video of Herschel Walker. It is embarrassing. Is something going on? All right. Moving on. Erica Mena uh, announced that she's officially divorced from Safari and it looks like she's celebrating the end of her marriage. Let's take a look. Now, Al, I'm going to go to you first because I know this is the couple most likely you want to have a threesome with. Are you happy? Or do you, think <laughs> you said they're both very attractive. I remember that. Do you think their marriage is finally over? And um, who would you go for now? Would you holler? Uh, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I think it's probably over because they're not getting their contract removed over there at Love and Hip Hop. Or, or, or. Maybe this makes for a great storyline because we know they're making up and they're exposing in that talk that they had. They claim that that was a highly rated episode. But, yeah, both of them are still a very attractive couple. They're not going to have any problems finding someone new or landing someone new. Safari or Erica, both of them are attracted to me. They made a beautiful couple, but I just never bought into it. But look, they got two beautiful kids from it. Yeah, that's true. This is true. Q, what do you think? Are they over? I think so. Um, and 
you know, what I want for Erica at this point is to stop it with the Hollywood relationships, right? Like you, you're approaching 40 if you have an arbor. No, you know, she should be about my age. So you're approaching 40. You got two kids. You know, uh, unfortunately, women are not granted the same grace that men get when it comes to children. It's um, mommy's baby, daddy's maybe. All right, now that you got kids, I don't need to see you in any more toxic relationships with the next rapper or the next reality star that you could find. Go get you a nice, wholesome, you know, Hollywood producer, or a nice, wholesome, you know, about to retire athlete or something and get you a real relationship and raise your kids. Do not take your kids through another cycle of circusry because you want to date the latest Bow Wow or the latest Safari or the latest Rich Dollars. Like that part of your life, Erica, I hope should be over and you should be focusing on, you know, sailing through life now in a happy space. I, I feel you. And I, I get that you date prox, like, you know, in, in your proximity and what you're used to and the events you go to. And a lot, unfortunately, a lot of, I won't just say women, a lot of people, we don't really get it till later on in life that that is not really, you know, all that glitters is gold. You know, you might want to get you, you know, get out of that because it hasn't been working out. Oh, uh, we have some breaking news here. Ooh, breaking news. Just just in breaking news. Chris Rock recently performed at the Wilbur in Boston. 617. Shout out to y'all and address the ordeal. He told the audience, I'm still processing what happened. He told fans that he would probably talk about it at some point in a serious manner. A lot of people listen. All his shows have been they're selling out. Ticket sales have 10x, I think. And people mm -hmm. thought that he would go in. What do y'all, Al? Let's get, go to you on this. What do you think about this? Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I think we're all we all want a front seat to what he's thinking and how he's feeling. Um, big up to Chris Rock, man. If there is any definition of consummate uh, a professional brother, you held it down. You held it down not only for men of color uh, that get that access to do the great things that you do, but you held it down for everyone that understands that violence can never be the answer and we can never support an action like that. And I don't care who it comes from, a megastar or not. Agreed. Q, what do you think about this? Chris Rock did not, he chose to still be professional and not go in when he has every right. And Tony Rock has been saying he's ready for that smoke. His brother, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've been seeing his tweets. He's like, yeah. it's on. What do you think? I mean, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I don't really <laughs> Chris Rock people, Chris Rock people. I really don't know what it is for his ass to process. He got the shit slapped out of him on stage. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cut and dry, but uh, I want to defer the rest of my time to Al because this creates a nice end for him. I know he had a point that he wanted to make earlier about the situation, and I'm curious to know what that point is. Well, you know, I, this is my take. I feel like that we have to really tell the truth here. I think the past three years, that red table, and Q, you've said it, we need to burn that damn red table. That red table has deduced a guy who we think of as our Black hero or just as an American hero. 35 years he spent building that brand, and in three years she's torn that brand all the way down to the shreds. She has humiliated him. She has embarrassed him. She has made him in what the streets call look like a punk, a bitch-ass punk if you ask me and he has been handling it all the best that he could i feel like that that slap was not in defense of uh his wife that slap was not because chris rock was rude to him that slap was because chris because uh will smith wanted his manhood back and on the biggest stage in the world he went up there and claimed it by slapping chris rock that's my opinion it's true it's 1000% yep. true. I mean, the slap was if he, you know, if he, he can't slap Jada. Right. And I, and I believe he still loves it. And, you know, and you know what? There's an argument to be made that he really probably can't make her too mad because she knows where all the bones the are there. Are she knows about all that. She could probably blow up the spot in a major way. So imagine being in that position where you're like, oh, I want to choke this bitch. But then, you know what I mean? She knows all your stuff. And then you out here, you are looking crazy, Will. We, like, beautiful... we had nothing to criticize before that damn red table got brought out. Nothing. Here's the, here's the beautiful thing for their relationship and his image, right? The slap creates a nice natural reset point. Him and Jada need to have a conversation that goes from this point on, no more of our business goes on that table. Mm. 
And I, I think it has, I think it's bigger than that, though. Q. I think I think if we're really honest and no one wants to dig into this, I think I think there's some narcissistic stuff going on in that relationship. Oh, yeah. And there's some trauma in that relationship. And it's not coming from him. And I think if we're even more honest, I just feel like, you know, it's going to take more than just that table going away. Uh, and, and, and Jada, I'm just going to speak to you right real, real quick with this last little 30 seconds. Ever since you got that table, it seems like you're beyond reproach. It uh-huh. seems like you are the end all be all. And you're like some kind of oracle that you are a little condescending to other people about, about their behavior. And like you almost have this like I'm never wrong type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm wondering if she's like that at the house with Will. Mm-hmm. Not to put it all on her because right. they are married, but right. that oh, red table. To, right. What if what if Will did that to her, sat on a red table and talked about how much he was in love with Aaliyah or sat on that red table and talked about a woman that he slept with that was his daughter's best friend? How humiliating is that for a star who's been working all his life for an Oscar 35 years, have all this yep. pent up? Yep. Well, you know what? I'm sure we're going to have more updates on Friday. I want to thank my co-host, Al Reynolds, Funky Dineva, special guest, Cheryl Rich, for joining us tonight. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Turns Out with T.S. Madison. We'll see y'all on Friday. Bye.